Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be doing kind of a pixelated shader, but using a blit feature, which is basically forcing a an effect on top of the current render pass. So these can be expensive, so use them wisely. And it's also not standard in Unity, so I'm going to try share this. Um, not, I can't even remember where I got it from. I think it was one of Unity's uh, GitHub's or some sort of document or something if I can find out where I found uh, I found this initially I will share it with you but there's a few guys who've done some good work with this so it's an extra pass that you add in your forward render inside of your URP I'm going to show you what the result is that's the kind of pixelated effect I guess it's not the best scene to do it in let's find a better scene let's just hit hit Okay, so we have the standard scene, and we can just go in and go to my renderer and turn the pixelated effect on, and automatically you can see things look a little pixelated. A lot of things I guess you could use this for. So the shader has a couple of settings. So if I go to my pixelated shader, I have the amount of pixelation, so the size of the pixels, say if the pixels 10 size or if it's like in this case if I were to go and make it completely like the amount of pixels a normal screen would have it looks perfectly normal again so I think you could animate some really cool stuff in here so like let's make it 250 you can see it kind of looks anti-aliased anti 32 pixels so I'm thinking of like showing you kind of how to do this and so now that we know what we're doing I'm just going to set off to the side here and I'm going to just Using the scene that I did in my previous video of making things unreal in Unity, I'm go, we're going to kind of talk about what is needed and again what I'm uh, using, if you will. So I'm going. I don't have the Blitz pass in here, so I'm just going to go import the, the package that I made. It's just a straight up Blitz. I, all it's got is essentially just these two scripts. That's it. And you can put this anywhere you want in your project. I just put it out of the way. I put it in my presets or put it in your URP. I guess I can just move it to my URP over here. And we'll get started with this. So we are going to start by creating a standard shader. So we're going to create a folder in here. This is getting a bit messy. Let's call this screen shaders. If I could spell shaders, that would have been great. And then uh, just normal shaders. I did the wrong thing. I created whatever that was. Sorry, my mouse, my left click on my mouse is doing some really shady stuff. There we go. So I'm just going to grab your standard materials and move it into here. And I'm going to go into the shaders here and create a new shader. And normally for screen stuff, I use an unlit because I don't need any lighting information on this shader. So we're just going to call this pixelator. Uh, let's call it pixelator like an 80s film. Right click and select and create a new material from that and let's just call it, I'm going to remove everything except for pixelate and just call it matte so I know the difference, well the icons give it away but it sometimes can be a bit tricky to kind of, I guess look at when you're looking at it working really quickly. So we're going to go to our preset, now our URP, select this here, we're going to click here and you'll see now that I've added that Blit feature, you'll see that it pops up here. So we're going to add a blit. I'm going to call this one Pixelator. We're going to add the material we just created. Over here. And notice how it goes weird and goes black. So I find that setting this blit material pass index to zero. It's the only one that has worked. Now, you'll see that there are events. Like, when do you want to render this? Do you want to render this bef after opaques, but before the skybox? Depending on what you want this, this material to affect. So, I'm going to say I want it to affect everything except for the post-processing. So, I'm going to say after rendering transparency, you'll see that it is white. Because we have no effect on this material yet. So... The material is white, therefore the screen is now being rendered as white. Notice how the post-processing in the scene is still working, the vignette is still there. You know, so that's a good sign, so that stuff still works. So let's open up this pixelator script. I'm the material. We're going to need a few things in here, but not a lot. We're just going to need a few things. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, let's talk about what we need here. We're going to need a texture so we can mess around with the UVs for this uh, pixelating effect. So we're going to go sample texture 2D. Oh, whoops, 2D. I'm going to plug that directly into the color because remember, this is an unlit material, so it's fine. And we are going to need a texture. Or do we? I saw recently that there is a scene color. I'm interested to see. No, no. Scene color gives me the scene color itself, but won't allow me to mess around, I guess, with the UVs. So we need to create a texture 2D. Just call this, let's call this scene color. Now, the, here's the, the important part. The name of here makes a difference. So it's going to have to be underscore main text, like that. If you don't do that, this is not going to work. So we're going to plug that directly into the texture slot. And you do not want to touch this. This texture is not a texture as we know it. It is the actual scene coming through as a texture. So don't try to mess around with this texture. That's why, like I said in the previous video, I wish this exposed would be exposed, but it could be hidden in the editor so that an artist wouldn't be confused and assign a material to the, a texture to that by mistake. Okay, so that once we do this, we save, we go back into Unity. Notice how our scene is back. So now it's no longer gray because all we're doing is feeding the scene back into itself, into that blip pass. Okay, let's get going. All we need is one more variable, which is very basic. It's a, this is the pixelate amount, I guess. Hopefully that's spelled right. <clears throat> I think my default value, I think I'll make it like something like, I think 32 looked quite nice, but let's make it... 128. You can use this to, as a transition like they did in the game Moonlight, uh, Moonlighter, I think it is. It's a night where it fades in and out but pixelates the screen. You can use that. That is a very nice little kind of effect. So what do we need? We need to get our screen position. So we're going to type in screen and get the screen position. And then all we care about is the red and the green, which means, sorry, the red and the green, which is your X and your Y. So we're going to split this out into just those two channels because we don't care about depth in this situation. So we're just going to combine those together again into the red and the green. So we're just getting the X and the Y of the screen. And we are going to multiply that value, just the grid and the green, not the others. So we're going to multiply that. And as you guessed it, we're going to multiply it by our floor. But I don't want any kind of float values because this is a float. So I'm going to make sure that we floor these values. And if you don't know what a floor is, think of floor and ceiling as the literal terminology. So it's like rounding up or rounding down. So I'm taking this uh, float and I'm rounding it down to the nearest whole number using the floor. If, you, if I replace this with ceiling, it would round up to the nearest uh, uh, integer. So we're going to plug that into there. So we're just multiplying. So whoops, I did it again. We're multiplying uh, the, uh, the x and the y position by this pixelate amount. So whatever that value is, for example, if it's one or two, uh, like in the case of the, the red, it's going to be 1080 on my screen, so I'm going to take that and divide that by 128, and that's going to give multiply that by 128, and that's going to give me a much smaller value of pixels. Okay, again, um, the result might not be what we want, so I'm going to floor that value one more time. We can test to see if it actually makes a difference. Sometimes I do this just out of habit, just to, as like a almost like using a case statement to make sure everything is 100% the way I want it. So this floor might or might not do anything, but we are getting unfloored values from here, so it's safe to floor it again after that. Okay, so all that we want to do is take this outcome, and we're going to divide it once again, or not once again, but we're going to divide it by this floored value here, just to get the difference, if you will. Okay, so let's put a group around this, call this Pixelate controls. I want to, I always I have to do this. I do this with all my students. I'm gonna group and say 
do not touch yes because I it's not for them it's for me I have done that in the past I've made mistakes and touched that when I shouldn't have and things broke okay so this is gonna be very very interesting because we're done there's our pixelated effect if I go here and move it higher or gr more or less we get a really nice kind of pixelated shader so if I go to five six we still kind of have let me maximize this on clay so you can see it we still have this kind of end here like a pixelated effect there so notice how it's screen based so it's it's kind of like putting a layer in Photoshop and just overlaying everything you've already done and uh, the, everything underneath it gets drawn underneath it so it, it hasn't it does not in any way affect the current materials you have and that's what's really nice about the screen uh, a shader kind of like in Unreal where you can make a post-processing shader is that this shader does not require you to go into every single material and set it up to work with this effect this effect is overlaid on top and all it's done if you look at the stats all it did was if we look at the passes quite a few passes in here let me just show you how many passes it is without that because I have 39 passes I'm assuming it has got to do with that shader of, uh, effect that I've added there but if we go to the sorry we go to URP again and we turn off the split spot it should be two less come on update there we go so it's 37 passes before I add this. So every blitz pass will add two passes to your rendering. <coughs> Again, I'm almost 100% sure if I turn off all these cubes. Wow, it's just wasn't a lot. So I, I'm interested to see what's causing all those passes. Because the cubes only add four extra passes by the look of five. So there's uh, something else in here that's causing fair amount of passes so be careful like I always look at my frame rate first if that starts to drop I look at my milliseconds and if that starts to go up I look at my triangle count I look at my passes I look at my shadow casters I look at everything there's just like there's no shadow casters really the slide is yeah it's casting shadows what do you mean no shadow casters it's just nonsense okay but that's about it for this video so um, uh, it was short it was sweet and hopefully it has helped you it's a really nice little uh, effect and it can work with a lot of cool things and hopefully this gives you ideas of what you can do with the split pass again very basic stuff nothing to it there was just two variables one was a texture to may, uh, record the, the current scene and then the other one was just to alter the UVs of that current scene that's how we were able to create that distortion effect or that broken effect yeah, so that's it, and until I see you again next time, please be safe and good luck.